Many have heard of the Front Mission series, and it's widely known as its tactical RPG franchise centered around battles involving giant walking robots, gnomes and swenzers. However, not everyone has played the original title, which was released back in 95 in Japan and only made its international debut in the summer in the form of the remake for PC and both the last generation of the PlayStation and Xbox. So, was it worth swimming? The first front mission was initially launched exclusively in Japan on the Super Famicom in 2003. A remastered version title Front Mission was, 1 was uh, released for the PlayStation in Japan and this is a version we received in the remake. It wasn't until four years later that the game made its first appearance in the United States on the Nintendo DS. Historically, many times in this franchise have rarely left Japan, despite high demand. Fans often had to produce their own translation. Front Mission 2 never saw a release outside of Hit Homeland, and the same fate befell Front Mission 5 Scars of the War, which was released on the PlayStation 2 in 2005. Along with the mobile series Front Mission 2089, uh, the 14th time it was made invisible, available in the United States for the original PlayStation 2004. While Front Mission 3, released in 2000, received a full international release, including Euro, and remains the most popular title in the franchise. However, in recent years, the term popular hardly applies to these games. After 15th installment, the series experienced a series of strange shifts, including giant change. Front Mission Online, which turned into a third-party shooter, lasted only 3 years. Front Mission Evolved in 2010 with a similar approach and end up with being a medical entry. The stealth action game Left Alive, set in the Front Mission universe, turned out to be a disaster. In light of this, what can be done? Naturally, the answer is to revisit the classic, with Front Mission first remake, leading the church. It's clear that the game looks significantly better than the original. The graphics, while not the most cutting edge, are quite pleasant and detailed in places. During battles you can even see exotic birds flying past our the battle map. The soundtrack has also been re-recorded. The composition remains the same, but sound more contemporary, natural and free of the chiptune quality. The developers have revamped the interface, modernized navigation, controls and camera options, allowing for rotation, zooming and elevation, which is very handy for surviving the battlefield. There is now a tactical map that provides a comprehensive overview of the situation and displays the position of all components. However, for persists wanting to experience the original game, there is an option to disable all these modern components and play in classic mode with a fixed camera. You can also listen to the original soundtrack. The ability to skip animation for instant moves and attacks will definitely appeal to the player after a dozen of battles. The plot and gameplay remain largely unchanged. The story unfolds in 2019 on the fictional Hoffman Island. A point of continuum between a United States of the new continent encompassing countries from North and South America and the Oceania Cooperative Union, an alliance of Southern Asian countries and Australia. Following a series of a border incidents, full ski hostiles erupt. This foundation conflict is characteristic of the franchise, even true of the game's future additional fictions nation with real world analogs. Europe, Africa and China, for example, the Thieves, led by Russia, is remained as the Republic of Zaftra. I elaborated on this setting because I intricately combined detailed political conflict with the personal dramas of special characters particularly evident in the first and third installments. In the Front Mission first remake, as original, two campaigns are presented. The first falls Oko, Captain Roy Seal, who hears his ambushed colleague and beloved Karen perish life on air during the very first mission. The second campaign centers around officer Kevin Greenfield, who commands a special forces unit. This campaign is more challenging. As the developers form and its very first mission, we encounter a boss I struggle to defeat even a gnome difficultly. While mercenaries could visit bars and earn money 
through a random battles in the first scenario. The second begins with the harsh realities of military life, barracks, mission discussion and order to deploy a turn. Yet even here unexpected twists and lyrical moments arise. After the first mission, Kevin reflects on his love for a woman, leading another species force unit. He eventually leaves the regular army to become a mercenary, but soon starts working with a group of soldiers, or fortune collaborating with an army to liberate enemy occupied territories. This is run by a promise to help find those responsible for the current death. A guild joined their ranks, claiming to have recently spoken with Karen in the hospital at the search for her missing brother. Both campaigns depict events from different perspectives, yet they are interconnected. Completing both scenarios is essential for fully understanding the unfolding narrative, especially given the array of compelling events and charismatic characters. This aspect reminds me of a juggled aliens too. As for the gameplay, it will feel femoral if you play Battle Touch, the turn based battle future Lich Lobert that can be modified with money earned from fights. We purchase and equip various mechanics parts for each Venzer, primary ammo, left and right arms and legs, and the central processor. Additionally, we can customize weapons for each arm and shoulder. Experimental is encourages, they are countless combination. However, we must stay within a budget and not exceed weight limits, just like in Battletech. Going over capacity prevent a rover from leaving the garage. Each part has its own stats, including weight, with some components pre-equipped with specific weapons, making it impossible to attach others. Crucially, defense and hit points are vital. If the central armor is destroyed in battle, the Venzer is rendered inoperable. While missing arms mean losing weapon capabilities, weapons are characterized as melee, medium, long range or multi-purpose, each fe uh, e featuring various parameters. Fighters can specialize in different weapons and tactics, but initially all soldiers have equal stats in melee, medium and long range combat, which develop slowly as they gain experience through use. It's important to know that legs provide different movement points. Grenade launchers and rocket launchers have limited ammo, and the central process influences the monster's evasion capabilities. Considering all of this, you could easily spend a lot of time in the shop and garage customizing machines for each fighter. Don't forget about consoles, which include not only health pack but also mines and various grenades. In the city, you can test each monster configuration in area battles. This is quite convenient. It's a great way to earn money, level up characters and immediately access the availability of your design. The turn based battles are engaging, with varied object protecting a convoy or a journalist, or destroying all air defense battles batteries with 10 turns, they are usually more enemies than aliens, and they often attack for, uh, from multiple directions, so it's crucial to locate forces wisely, dividing them into the tactical groups or coordinating a unified front. However, some aspects reveal that the tactics feel somewhat outdated, lacking several essential tools, hates are seldom neutralized, flanking and real attacks don't inflict significant critical damage. There's no overheating mechanics for weapon, like in Battletech, and while the mech exposes spectacularly, there are no lasting environment consequences. Most importantly, the ability to target specific parts of the enemy's body only becomes available when a character reaches level 14. Allowing them to choose the party skill in my case, this is likely privilege in Italy belongs solely to the main character of the first campaign, while all other continues to inflict random damage. Why can't experienced mercenaries, at least infantry, target specified parts of the enemy robots? It seems illogical. I often found myself resorting to frequent saves and loads to ensure my character hits the nearly deployed central ammo instead of shooting at intact armor of legs. To change the weight is almost is also randomly determined. While the situation is influenced by relevant stats of both enemies and aliens as well as their weapon mastery, some fools clearly await attacks from a certain weapons better than others. 
Yet there is no visible parameter for heat change displayed on the screen. As a result, battles against particularly taught opponents on higher difficulties often boil down to trial and error, where silver loading becomes essential for discovering the best position and weapon choice for effective hits. Interestingly, quick save loading essentially acts as a cheat or a bug. After it, it previously moving unit can take another turn. From a technical standpoint, the remake isn't flawed either. There are rare instances where the game froze completely, and once they encountered a crucial bug that halted progress in the second campaign. Front mission remake raised several questions. But even in its current state, with its outdated tactics, the project leaves a positive impression and evokes a warm nostalgia for the games of the childhood and the young. Especially science battles still provide room for strategy and not everything hinge on casting saves. However, in the upcoming remakes, the second and third installment, I hope to see more tangible adjustment to the gameplay. So, to sum up, the pros of the game is a two intriguing story campaigns preventing events from different viewpoints, UV characters and personal traumas, extensive customization option for battle robots, engaging tactical missions, and a more modern take on graphics, music, interface, control and camera work. And cons is the tactics can feel outdated and occasionally tedious. These are uh, technical issues. So if you like old games, I highly recommend to try it. Thank you.